Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another video. L2 spammers, where are you at? If you've been playing Fortnite since the start, you've probably noticed how incredible the progress of controller players have been over time. Dating back to season one, where controller players basically had zero chance at beating any players on keyboard and mouse, to present day, where we constantly see controller players on the top of the leaderboards. In today's video, we'll be doing a list of the best controller player from each season of Fortnite. Also, if you're looking to improve at Fortnite, whether you're on controller or keyboard and mouse, or even another platform, then be sure to check out ProGuides.com, where you can play with a pro coach who can give you the best tips and strategies to improve your gameplay today. But with that out of the way, let's get started with the best controller player from Season 1. Now, the earliest seasons of Fortnite are definitely the toughest to pick, simply because the controller scene really wasn't well developed at all. But our pick for Season 1 has definitely got to be Nick Merckx. Since Nick really started blowing up in later seasons, most of us don't really know him for the OG days. But believe it or not, he was easily one of the best controller players in Season 1. During a time where the average player was grinding hours a day for one single win, Nick was out here dropping up to 20 wins per day and making everyone else look like total fools. So even though the controller scene wasn't really that well developed during this time, there's no doubt that Nick was one of the best even compared to the top mouse and keyboard players at the time. Moving on to season two, which was still a pretty dry season for controller, one controller player who really started making a name for himself is known as Upshaw. Upshaw was an absolute grinder during this time, streaming every single day and racking up hundreds and hundreds of wins. In season two, Upshaw had around 1,200 wins and get this, an 18 KD. That means he got 18 kills for every death, which while incredible on its own, was exponentially more impressive considering the disadvantages that came with being a controller player at that very time. Now moving on to season three, things really began to spice up for the controller community. Players were beginning to improve and while it wasn't near the level of keyboard and mouse, controller was making progress. And one of the best controller players of this era is a YouTuber who goes by the name Gronky. Now Gronky was never really a competitive player, but there wasn't really any competitive scene in season three, regardless apart from some closed crims and Invitationals. During this time, Gronky started making tips and tricks videos and not only did his socials grow, but he was clearly a top level player, with every video showing yet another 20 or 30 kill game. So while Gronky never really ended up playing competitive, there's really no doubting he was pretty dang good back in the day and he really deserves a spot on this list. Moving on to season 4, this was around the time when Playground was released and controller players were really starting to solidify themselves as true competitors in the scene. And in season 4, one console beast specifically stood out from the rest. His name is Jacob. Jacob, also known nowadays as Wavy Jacob, has always been at the top of the controller scene, but season four was especially great for him. During season four, you could see him streaming on YouTube or posting videos all the time, and he was consistently dropping high kill games like it was nothing. Alongside being in the team Chronic, Jacob was one of the most notable controller slash console players of the time and was quite possibly the best controller player of this season. In season five, we started seeing the earliest days of Fortnite competitive, with the summer skirmish starting up and scrims really starting to gain popularity. While controller players still weren't on top, they were definitely starting to make some progress towards it. And during this time, one of the most mechanically talented controller players was known as Camo. Camo was a relatively unknown EU player, but really started making a name for himself in season five by posting YouTube videos of his incredible gameplay, where he easily rolled through some really good players. Not only was he a great mechanical player, but Camel was placing at the top consistently in tournaments like Summer Skirmish and Keemstar's Friday Fortnite, along with the Fall Skirmish in Season 6. In a time where controller players really didn't have any respect, Camo was one of the first to really make moves in the competitive scene and prove that they can compete at the top level. Similar to Camo, moving on to Season 6, our next pick is going to be the guy you probably expected to see, and that's Aiden. Aiden is a competitive player who rose in seasons 5 and 6 from his fights with Nick Merckx and Tilted Towers and his overall incredible gameplay. In season 6, Aiden really started dominating with some incredible performances in Fall Skirmish, including a 9th place finish in the TwitchCon finals with his former rival Nick Merckx. 
In this tournament, they honestly put on a clinic of some of the best players, slaying out repeatedly. This was one of the tournaments that really put Controller on the map, and Aiden was one of the first Controller players to finally reach the top level and solidify the Controller players as high-level competitors who had a chance. On to Season 7, Controller had solidified itself in the scene, and while this pick may be a bit of a surprise to you guys, I think the best Controller player in Season 7 was Sway aka the face Sway we're all familiar with today. This pick probably surprises you as Sway never really played competitive until chapter 2, and even now doesn't play it much, but hear me out. In season 7, Sway was absolutely exploding on YouTube, dropping 30 bombs on a daily basis, and with the release of Creative, he was easily one of the most talented builders in the entire world. While he really didn't play competitive, it's clear that if he did play competitive at the time, he'd quite possibly be at the top. So although it seems like a crazy pick on the surface, we think Faceway was the best controller player in Season 7. Finally guys, moving on to Season 8, we saw the start of the World Cup qualifiers and one of the most underrated up and coming beast of the time was known as Unknown X Army or present day NRG Unknown. At the time, Unknown was completely unknown. He was placing decently well, most notably third place in the Black Card Cup in early season 8, but he ended up proving himself as one of the best by qualifying twice for the World Cup solo finals, once in season 8 during week 3 and once in season 9 during week 9 of the qualifiers. This shocked everyone to see a controller player at the top, and his skills really shocked everyone. So it's no question that Unknown takes Season 8. Moving on to Season 9, this is where things get really spicy. Season 9 was, as you probably know, the season of the World Cup, and one EU player came out of seemingly nowhere, placing second in the duo finals and securing himself over a million dollars with his duo Rojo. Overnight, Wolfies went from a kid with a dream and the drive to succeed to a kid who had done what many people had considered impossible and dominated the best lobbies in the history of the game all on controller, which was still being clowned at the time. This was the ultimate turning point for the controller scene and controller players. Apart from some jokes from salty keyboard and mouse players, they finally gained their respect in the scene. Now, moving on to Season X, also known as Season 10, it was a really awkward time for the Fortnite scene. With a giant mechs that could literally obliterate your entire team in a split second, aka the most balanced items in the game, to the unusual locations Epic was adding in, it was a really strange season. Throughout this strange season, one unknown player known as Lechi was beginning to work his way up the ranks. Lechi was really good previously, having qualified for the World Cup himself. In Season 10, the scene was awkward, but Lechi still managed to make a name for himself on social media and played decently in Trio's FNCS, getting 6th in Week 4, but unfortunately having a disappointing performance in the heats which resulted in them not making the Grand Finals. But despite that, Leshy still had an amazing season and this season was really that stepping stone that sent him into the Pro Leagues. And today you can see him placing at the top almost every single event with pros like our very own Benji Fish, Mr. Savage M, and others by his side. Also, speaking of Leshy, he also has his own course over on ProGuides.com where he goes over some of his best tips for you controller players out there. So feel free to go check that out and also check out our pro coaches who can help you step up your game fast with one-on-one -on -one coaching and training. The link will be down in the description so make sure to go check it out if you're interested in reaching the next level. Moving on to season one of chapter two after the black hole incident, this is actually the first double pick on our list and our pick is unknown once again. If you don't remember, Unknown was pretty much the best player in the world this season. Controller players had been good in the past, but there hadn't been a season until Chapter 2 Season 1 where we could confidently say the world's best player was on controller. With repeated top 5 finishes and cash cups with multiple first places and topping it all off with first place in squads FNCS Grand Finals securing a cool $187,500 split between his squad, there's no doubting Unknown was easily the best and by a wide margin as well. Season 2 of Chapter 2 was yet another interesting season for competitive, and this was the point where we were literally seeing controller players at the top left and right. At this point in time, you could have argued that controller was overall the more dominant input compared to keyboard, which is a big statement, but a true one as well. And the best controller player at the world at this time was actually a former keyboard and mouse player who switched to controller, and the player who won over a million dollars from the Solo World Cup yet again on keyboard. His name is Epic Whale. 
After winning millions of dollars as a keyboard player, Epic Will decided to make the switch to controller after realizing how wildly overpowered aim assist was at the time. He grinded his mechanics non-stop and with his controller aim, mouse and keyboard game sense, and wild mechanics, he managed to secure a ton of first place finishes, including cash cups, FNCS qualifiers, and he topped it off by getting first place with his duo Rex in the FNCS duo finals on NA West. Since then, Aim Assist has had some major nerfs, and Epic Will has made the decision to return to keyboard and mouse. However, he's still one of the best, if not the best player on NA West, so it's all good on his end. Moving on to the most recent completed season, we have Chapter 2 Season 3, where the undisputed GOAT was definitely the player known as Coop. Yet again, for this season, you could easily make the argument that a controller player, AK Coop, was the best player in the world. Coop started the season a bit slow, but made some incredible progress and ended up becoming the most dominant solo player in NA East, securing first place in the two hardest tournaments of the season, the FNCS Invitational along with DreamHack August Open, and grabbing a solid $50,000 in the FNCS tournament and $10,000 from DreamHack. This consistency has been almost unheard of from any other player, and we wouldn't be surprised to see Coop on top in more major events moving forward. Finally, guys, we've got the current season, Chapter 2, Season 4. We don't want to make a definitive pick for this season until it's over, especially with FNCS and the fact that, well, it isn't over. However, there are a few absolute beasts in the scene, and we're super excited to see who might end up on top. If I had to make a prediction right now, it's got to be either Illist or Reet. Both of them are absolutely nutty players and are performing at incredible levels, so keep your eyes on those too. And with all that said guys, that was our list of the best controller player from each season of Fortnite. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of our picks and whether or not you would change any. Keep in mind we aren't perfect and chances are we may have missed one or two. But anyways, be sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to join the Pro Guides family and help us hit 1 million subscribers. We're inching closer and closer every day and we genuinely can't thank you guys enough.